Here's how you take limits with Maple. It's pretty straightforward. Here are three limit examples that we might see from our limit section in the book. The basic idea in Maple to take a limit is to type the function that you want to work with. So for the first example, x cubed minus 27 divided by x to the fourth plus x minus 84. So I'll enter that, make sure I got it right. And then like usual, we select the output, we right click, and we get a context menu. And there, right in the middle of the menu, is limit. When you click on it, you're going to get a window that gives you an option for what the limiting point is. Well, in this case, we're trying to get to 3. And then you can do a two-sided, right-sided, or left-sided limit. And so in this case, this is a two-sided limit, so I hit OK. And Maple tells me that the limiting value is 27 one ninths. One downside to this approach is that it doesn't give you any clue how it found that. But one of the things that we could attempt to do is mimic the process. For example, if I were doing this by hand, I would try to plug 3 into here first. Now if I go in and do this with Maple, that would be evaluate at the point 3. And Maple would tell me that I get a division by 0. That's no good. So then what we would do is we would take this guy and we would clean it up. We would try to simplify it. So I'm going to have Maple go give me a context menu, and there at the very bottom is Simplify. If you scroll down to Simplify Symbolic, Maple says that the original function can be simplified to that guy there by factoring and canceling. So it's a lot better at it than I am. Now if I select that, right click and try plugging in 3 again, then I get 27 1 ninths, which agrees exactly with what I had down here. And so that's apparently how Maple did it. So you can use the limit tool to find the exact value, which is great for checking homework, or you can use the algebraic tools to double check your work. Here would be an example of a limit from one side or the other, a sided limit. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is plug in that function, 1 minus cosine, oops, 1 minus cosine of x squared divided by 6 minus x. Now, if I go and select this, right click on it, I can choose the limit. The limit point this time is now 6, but I want to take the limit from the left. If I hit OK, then Maple will tell me that the limiting value is infinity. That must mean I'm at a vertical asymptote. And again, if I try plugging 6 into here directly, on the bottom I'm going to get 0, on the top I'm not going to get zero, which would tell me that I am at an asymptote. So Maple's one-sided limits will tell you plus or minus infinity, just like we're supposed to. So that's kind of cool. How about this last example? Well, this is a piecewise function, and defining a piecewise function in Maple is a little bit challenging. But for limits, you don't really need to do that. You really just have to look at the two limits of the pieces on either side. For example, the square root of x plus 7 is the part of f of x that's to the left of 2. So when I want to take the limit as x approaches 2, I'm just going to take the limit of this guy as x approaches 2 from the left. And it turns out that that value is 3. On the other hand, 4 times x minus 5 is the portion of f of x that lies to the right of 2. So I can take the limit of this part as x approaches 2 from the right. And it turns out that this value is also 3. So the left and the right both agree. That would tell me that the limiting value here is 3, even though I can't write the piecewise function down. So there's the basics of working with limits.